Hello everyone, this is Lisa from Power Wheelchairs for Success and today we are going to do another segment on news you can use. So uh, we're going to start in Pajaro, California. Uh, as you know, California has had a lot of floods and so this man's uh, power wheelchair was completely destroyed by the floods. So. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Frazier uh, decided that he would jump in to help this person uh, who lost his power wheelchair in the flood. He contacted Channel 8 and got the information about the gentleman about, uh, from the Samora family. And he went over there and donated a, uh, a power scooter. So uh, the gentleman who lost uh, his power wheelchair is back into uh, business. So this is coming from KSBW uh, Channel 8, uh, their action news section. And uh, this was uh, written and filmed by uh, Jake Flores. So, Jake, thank you so much for putting that up. Uh, we always need good news and to uh, know that there are a lot of good people out there. From there, we go to, I think this is California as well. No, this is Arizona. <laughs> so, All right, so this is a gentleman uh, who uh, has a muscle disease in Chula Vista. Um, and thieves stole his, uh, wrecked his van. They just cut a, a portion of the pipe out there. So thieves steal catal catalytic converter from a uh, mobility van. So he's already in dire straits and had some help from the community, and now they wrecked his uh, accessible van. So uh, he put up a GoFundMe uh Page, and I am happy to announce that he has uh, been able to raise all the funds he needs. So he's, he's doing well. I'm sure his van is going to be repaired very soon. So uh, thank you, everyone who donated to uh, this uh, person in Chula Vista. Uh, he, this article was written by Zef Zevely, Jeff Zevely. <laughs> So on April 12, 2023. So, uh, yep. So this was uh, in this Zevely zone. <laughs> we, so, yeah, they uh, put up a fundraiser page, and it did very well. So, um, so thank you, everyone who chipped in. He's doing much better now that he has the the van repaired. Uh, from there, we go to, I think this is Europe. They have a, um, a company called Designability. Uh, and I think they're a non-for-profit, but they look for new ideas for wheelchair users. And in this case, they have created uh, an arm that connects uh, uh, a child buggy to their wheelchair. So if they need to push their, push their kid in their in the little carriage, uh, they can. They can attach it to uh, a wheelchair. In this case, it's a manual wheelchair, so we'd have to see at some point if they can create one for power wheelchairs, which is a little bit trickier because the power wheelchairs, you know, the designs uh, vary so much. But uh, it looks good. There's a little video on it, and it's a, a, a straight arm, and it clamps on to the manual wheelchair. So, so that's cool. So thank you, Designability, and we hope you continue to be creative in helping those parents out there with their children. Uh, let's see. We go to Channel 12. Now, this one is interesting. Uh, a woman using a wheelchair left stranded after being dropped off at a wrong medical facility by transport service. So this is a really ridiculous one. The 78-year-old Valley woman, this is in Phoenix, Arizona, 
uh, uses a wheelchair and relies on medical transport uh, to take her to different doctor appointments each week. And guess what? They dropped her off uh, at the wrong facility. Uh, they gave her a choice of going home or staying at this facility that she had no idea where it was. <laughs> so, and couldn't figure out, you know, she didn't, she wasn't able to uh, convince the company to please take her to the right facility. So she was left there on the sidewalk of this facility and she was just upset, you know, as anybody would be. And um, some nurses came out and called an Uber, uh, an accessible Uber, and sent her to the right facility. Uh, and I'm sure they gave a call to the transport company. Uh, she, in the end, did get to the right facility. Uh, but she wants all of us to be aware and to make sure, you know, that the company understands where they're going and who they are helping so, and where they need to go exactly. So, and I do that as well with my company that uh, helps me get from point A to point B. So um, I always kind of make sure, and if this is a new address for them, I just make sure the night before that they have the correct information because yeah, I'm in a power wheelchair. <laughs> what am I gonna do if I'm stranded? So other than calling uh, someone to help me out. So. Uh, here, from there, we go to global news, and this is Canada. Pair left stranded in Vancouver due to lack of wheelchair accessible cabs. So they went to a, uh, a concert. So leaving a venue after a concert ends tends to be hectic. Of course, we know that, uh, no matter where you are. However, the ride home can be a lot more stressful for someone who uses a wheelchair. This happened uh, to two West Kelowna, uh, British Columbia residents who were left stranded after they were told no accessible taxis were available. So they weren't the only ones who needed accessible taxis. So when Hannah uh, Des Rochers and Kyle Hindley went to the concert in Vancouver at the end of March, they were able to get a wheelchair accessible ride to the show However, when the performance ended, it was a different story. So, of course, the rush to get home, and I'm sure there was more than one person who needed accessible vans. So, uh, I probably made a 30 different phone calls trying to get someone to get us because we needed a wheelchair accessible vehicle. Every cab company told me they had one or two wheelchair accessible cabs, and either they were being in use, in use right now or they weren't in the area. So they had a hard time getting home. So <laughs> after being stranded for three hours, the two were desperate for a solution, uh, but eventually one rolled right up to them. This limo driver said he drove by three different times doing three different drop-offs for different people after the concert, and he kept seeing us stranding on the same street corner. Manasse Mahuara was the driver that night, and he said he couldn't pass by the two another time. So I dropped my client in another city, and coming back maybe another hour or something like that, he still he is still there. So, <laughs> something is not right. I mean, like, you know, it's always on the, my mind. Like, you know, this person needs help. I, I have to do something, said Mahuara. Uh, these people are supposed to be home earlier than everybody else. They need help. Since the limo was not a wheelchair accessible, Henley had to be lifted into the vehicle manually which required the Scrochers and Mahuara to carry him in. He was, he was, bless his heart, he was insistent. He was like, no, we can do it. We can just slide him in, said Hindley. <laughs> Mahuara uh, carried Hindley into the back of his limo and brought them back home. They were then able to portable uh, wheelchair lift 
uh, to get Henley inside and back in his wheelchair. <laughs> so, you know, things can be, oh my goodness, yes. I see the, there's a picture here of them lifting him up with, in a Hoyer lift. So, you know, when you plan to go to a concert, be aware that there might be more than one person who needs the accessible taxis. <laughs> and be prepared. <laughs> So yeah, that is difficult. Um, transportation is always an issue, and we need to be careful when we are um, making those uh, big uh, trips and, and um, adventures. So, and again, you know, I've reported on this before, but uh, we go back to the United States, and uh, the all-terrain wheelchair uh, is spreading throughout state parks and probably federal parks as well. So just remember that the all-terrain wheelchairs need to be uh, scheduled like seven days before you go to the park. So I know it takes a little bit of planning, but uh, if you really want to enjoy that park and go on the off trails and areas, you know, you, you, this uh, all-terrain wheelchair is is really, really awesome. So know that you have to call ahead of time and uh, schedule one so you can enjoy your trip to the park. And those are spreading throughout the United States. So that is awesome that people can get out more in nature. So uh, keep that in mind, seven days prior to your, um, to your visit to the park. Now, this one is interesting. This is from, um, I can barely read it, Instustan Times, and they want to give us some recommendations uh, when we need to fly uh, with our wheelchair. So he, they have some five air travel tips for wheelchair users. I'm going to make some comments in between. But so here we go. And they have like flashcards. Inform the airline while booking. You know, if you are carrying your own wheelchair, then make sure you call the airline to inform and coordinate with them while booking your ticket. If you wish to request a wheelchair from the airline itself, pre-book a wheelchair while booking your flight. Your flight tickets to avoid issues in non-availability of wheelchairs. No, it's true. Plan your <laughs> plan your bathroom trick, uh, trips. So. Uh, yes, we always do that, and we know to cut back on fluids and all that kind of stuff. Try to plan your restroom breaks in advance and use the restroom at the airport as using the restroom on the plane, especially if you need assistance, can be challenging. Yes, we already know that. <laughs> we know what it's like to travel in a wheelchair and then not be able to use a bathroom like regular human beings on the plane. <laughs> Keep a time buffer. Yes, we do that. On most airlines, wheelchair users exit the aircraft at last when the rush is gone. Make sure you keep enough time if you are taking connecting flights to avoid any hassles. Yes, we know that. Carry emergency supplies of whatever. Yes, and we know what kind of emergency supplies we're talking about. Always carry emergency supplies like spare parts for your wheelchair or duct tape, <laughs> bubble wrap in case you, your wheelchair gets damaged. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Request for bulkhead seating. Yes, that would be nice, but a lot of airlines charge for those special seats. Bulkhead seating is the first row in economy class, which does not have a seat in front. Request the bulkhead seating as it gives you more leg space. Yes, if they didn't charge for it, that would be nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice suggestions, um, but we are very aware of the challenges of flying, uh, and for some it might be helpful, useful, maybe there's an idea in there that uh, you didn't think about. But we know about bathroom tri uh, trips. <laughs> we know very well what it takes for us to fly. So um, someone asked me the other day, well, what do you do if you have to go to the bathroom on the plane? And I said, we don't, <laughs> period. <laughs> so we just don't. <laughs> so 
she was a little shocked at my answer, but <laughs> it's the way it goes for us. And by the way, news you can use will be posted now every Monday. Um, I'm kind of picking up on a schedule here because uh, I have some other uh, types of videos we'll, we will be doing. So uh, that, is, that is great. You know, we're kind of evolving and we kind of know what we like, what we don't like, so as a community. So I will be attempting to uh, slip in a schedule. So my hope is uh, every Monday we'll post news you can use. On Wednesdays, I'm hoping to get into the practice and post uh, podcasts. And on Fridays, we will have the wheelchair, wheelchair tech series. So, um, and in between, I'll do my usual uh, other loose topics that might be helpful for all of us. All right, keep that in mind for Monday's News You Can Use, Wednesday's Podcasts, and Friday's Wheelchair Tech. If you have any suggestions or any topics you would like for us to cover, let us know, and we will see you in the next one.